Okay, here we are at the end. Episode number 27, we're calling it. Of radiation readings up and down the west coast, U.S. beaches, all the way from Canada down to Mexico. We did a, 20, a total of 26 different readings at beaches. Uh, spaced fairly evenly apart. There were some times that I couldn't get to places or other times I had to get a bunch, bunch of them close together, but we did seven in Washington State, we did seven in Oregon State, and we did 12 in California. And so, and right now we're at the end of the journey and at the end of California here. In fact, behind me, if you can see it way in the background, is Tijuana. Uh, we are right at the Mexican border still. And, and in fact, last night I got eight micro Rentkins measuring overnight after my last reading here with the Mazur. I'm using micro Rentkins now mostly for this video. Uh, below you will see listed all the readings we got for all 26 beaches in micro Rentkins and counts per minute since YouTube wants counts per minute. But I use micro Rentkins. And if you want to compare these numbers, what do the numbers mean? Compare them to what I measure all the time. Every weekend I'm in a different city at forbiddenknowledge.info. Go to the radiation page and you're going to find, it's linked below, you're going to find the readings I've taken all across the country for many years now as long-term overnight averages. So they're all there. Uh, and I haven't updated some of the other ones yet but because uh, I've been on the road now for about three weeks doing this. So, uh, the numbers. The lowest numbers we got were like seven on this trip. The highest numbers we got were 15. Uh, we got two sevens and we got two 15s. Those are normal, folks. I don't know what you expect. Well, I know what a lot of you expected. A lot of you expected to see high radiation readings because you think you're going to die from Fukushima. None of the numbers I got will kill anybody anywhere in the world. I knew this before we even started this journey. I knew this was rather pointless to start with. If you watch what I'm going to add on as episode zero on this playlist, you're going to find that I said right from the start, when I, before I started this journey, that we weren't going to find anything because you're not going to find any Fukushima radiation with a Geiger counter, any U.S. beach, or any beach in the world outside of Fukushima Prefecture. That's just a fact. People don't want to believe it, but I think I've just proven that. As everybody said, well, these death plumes coming here and we're all going to die from Fukushima here in California or wherever. And it's just not true. That was one of the whole points of the series this video. But the exercise was rather pointless because what you really need, if you think you're going to find any kind of radiation from Fukushima, Anywhere in the world, you're going to need a mass spectrometer or gamma spectrometry. You, the spectrometry. You're going to have to have a different type of equipment to measure soil samples, water samples, air samples, or food samples if you think you're going to find any kind of radiation from Fukushima. And then you aren't necessarily going to know whether it's from Fukushima or if it's from a toxic waste dump off the coast of San Francisco, for instance, in episode number 17. You aren't going to know that necessarily. So you need a lot more expensive equipment and you need a lot more knowledge, a lot more skill, and a lot more time to do this if you think you're going to try to find radiation readings that are going to be elevated from Fukushima. That's just the facts, and I knew this before we even started, so I knew this exercise was rather pointless. But it had to be done to try to shut up, shut up the Fukutards who try to convince you that you're going to die from Fukushima. None of these readings I got, absolutely none of them, would suggest anybody's going to die anywhere along the West Coast, regardless of what you've been told. People who have been telling you have a, an agenda or a narrative. They either are getting YouTube hits on their channel for money, monetized channels. They're uh, they're anti-nuke. Hey, if you want to be anti-nuke, that's fine. You can be anti-nuke. Frankly, anybody who's anti-nuke hasn't really studied the situation. And conversely, anybody that's pro-nuke hasn't really studied the situation. Because I'm neither pro-nuke or anti-nuke. I'm pro-truth. So if you come on this channel and want to start lying about radiation, I'm going to attack you right back. You're going to be shut down because I'm going to give you facts. Ask that from Kevin and Dana. Ask if they can really give you facts. No, all they have is assertions. All the Fukutards on YouTube, all they have is assertions. They don't have facts to back up what they're saying. All the levels of radiation anybody's seeing anywhere in the world outside of Japan, Fukushima pre Prefecture, are normal because they ha you, you just need to study how radiation travels. I, got, I can't get it through your head more than, that, more than that. Study how radiation travels. That's why I knew when the plant blew up in 2011 and I knew when I started taking this read these readings on the beaches that there was going to be nothing because it can't get here in any kind of levels that could be measured with any kind of Geiger counter. And none of the readings obtained anywhere are going to kill anybody 
due to radiation and even if the numbers are elevated for instance let's take number seven and number eight episode number seven and number eight between Grayland, Washington and Seaview, Washington uh, we got uh, levels of 15 in Seaview and 13 in Warrington, Oregon uh, Seaview, Washington and Warrington, Oregon the highest grouping together now that was on either side of the Columbia River and I would expect to see slightly elevated readings because frankly I, I followed that river all the way from eastern Idaho when I came into Washington I, on Highway 12, there's a river that runs, really scenic, beauty uh, path, by the way. The, the road runs, and you will follow that river all the way down, and it dumps into the Columbia River, and the Columbia River, in turn, dumps into the, um, into the Pacific Ocean. And I saw readings that were slightly elevated there. You get runoff of natural radiation from things like uranium in the soils and other radioactive soils that get eroded and end up going out to sea and then washing back up on the shores. You're going to find some, in fact, all beaches in the world, you're going to find some different types of radioactive elements that just wash up from being washed off of mountain ranges or whatever. So we saw slightly higher readings there. They're still nowhere near. They're still lower than living in Colorado. Okay? Are you afraid of living in Colorado? Then you're afraid of living in, in Washington and Oregon and California. There's no reason for the, there's no justification for such fear porn. Um, and then we had slightly, and even, for instance, nuclear power plant. One of the episodes, number number 24, we tested right next to a nuclear power plant, a, a former nuclear power plant, one that has been shut down since 2013. And no radiation levels there were elevated either, just like I expected, because I've been by many nuclear power plants and they've never had elevated readings. Sorry, no matter what you want to think. No, unless there's an accident there, you're not going to have elevated readings around nuclear power plants because we were reading 11 there. We actually were reading higher elsewhere in California than that. Carlsbad, California, was reading at 15. And that's the only other 15 we had. Nowhere in these readings listed below are you going to be in any danger of dying from radiation. And to go back and look at the numbers again, keep in mind if you're in an aircraft at 35,000 feet, commercial jet airliner, you're going to be receiving about 700, 800 counts per minute on that flight. So for many hours, you're going to be exposed to more than 10 times the amount of radiation. Almost 100 times, actually, during flight. And look to see if airline stewardesses and pilots see if they're coming down with cancers and dying in masses. The whole point of this exercise was to shut down the fuku tards such as Kevin and Dana, people like that, and all Paul and all the other ones that are screaming you're gonna die. I prove them wrong all the time. Demand they give you proof. I've just given you proof. Demand they give you proof. They only give you assertions. They have their monetized YouTube channels. They're trying to get money from hits, or they're asking for donations, or they have a book they're write, written, or they're on a lecture tour, or they're just plain anti-nuke. Hey, you can be anti-nuke, that's fine. I think if you're anti-nuke, you haven't really studied the problem. And conversely, if you're pro-nuke, you really haven't studied the problem. I'm neither anti-nuke or pro-nuke. I am pro-truth. So if you come on this channel, start screaming about Fukushima and you're going to die, and all about radiation, and if you're telling lies, which you will, I'm going to I'm going to attack you right back because on this channel we offer evidence, proof, and the truth. The others offer assertions and out-and-out -out lies to keep their narrative going, keep their agenda going, and they'll have it no other way. They'll hate videos like this because it exposes them for the liars that they are. I guess that's about it for this series. Uh, there's a whole lot of other videos that I may put in this series too. Uh, sea lions, birds, tide pools, all the things everybody said was impossible, all the Fukutars said was impossible. We took some videos along the way of those things. Maybe I'll put them right in the playlist along with everything else. I don't know yet, but thanks for everybody for joining me and watching for the series. Stay tuned to this channel for other important information from ForbiddenKnowledge.info. Thanks, this is Craig, so long.